Hello and welcome to the Lean Solutions Podcast. My name is Patrick Adams and we are in episode 17 where we're going to be talking about lean in higher education. Today we're joined by Dagmar Vallejos from the University of New Hampshire and Dagmar is a senior process improvement professional at the university where she's responsible for the training, mentoring, and facilitation of lean principles at the university with the employee work culture um, and uh, also, you help to inspire employees to feel empowered in their contribution to the university. So welcome, Dagmar. Thank you, Patrick. I'm very happy to be here today. Yes, and Dagmar, you partner with uh, university departments such as the Career Services, the Registrar's Office, Financial Aid, and many others across the university uh, on process improvement projects to help eliminate waste and optimize the flow of information throughout the university. It sounds like a pretty amazing job. It's actually pretty fantastic. Um, the outreach is so broad and I have an opportunity to work with faculty, staff, and students as well. So uh, it's a really exciting place to be. That's amazing. I was actually out there just a couple years ago for your, yep. your uh, Lean Summit. I uh, was excited to be part of that and obviously a very beautiful area, beautiful uh, campus. So uh, you are very lucky to be where you're at. Uh, I feel the same way. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> uh, part of today's focus is going to be around the current COVID situation and how it's impacted mm -hmm. lean in higher education. But before we get into that, there's probably listeners out there that are wondering about lean in higher education. Maybe they've never heard of that or they don't really know what that means, right? So can you help the listeners to understand what, what lean and higher education is and how you're using lean principles and practices um, to uh, help the university and, and other universities? And, what, and also, what are some of your greatest challenges uh, as you work you know, in the university and, and help to spread the lean culture? Yeah, Patrick, it's a, it's a pretty amazing environment to be in. Uh, not normally known for having lean process improvement in higher education, but it has been highly instrumental in progressing us forward as we're in such a competitive market and uh, financially unstable market in, in many cases. So the approach that we use is we provide lean services to all departments across campuses. And in addition to that, we also provide training for staff. So not only are we identifying areas of improvement and working with departments to streamline their processes. We're also training staff so that they can recognize and work on building out that lean culture within higher education. That's one of our biggest main focuses is that we, okay. everyone every day to be thinking about the work that they're doing and how they're executing their job. So whether they're in a formal lean process project or whether they're just evaluating how they do their work on a day-to-day -day basis. We want them to think in that mindset. You asked about challenges and some of the challenges that we do face is that employees who work in higher education tend to have been in their jobs for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Just started a project um, and when we went through the introductions, everybody was talking about how long they had been working in higher education. And for a team of 12 people, we had over 188 years of wow. experience within the university systems of New Hampshire. So to me, that's tremendous commitment to higher education, but at the same time, I could see some challenges that could come from that when it comes to trying to get people to change how they do their work. Absolutely. So that's our biggest challenge is the longevity, how much I admire people for being in their positions for a long time. As a lean facilitator, it makes me pause a little bit to say, I think I'm going to run into a few challenges um, trying to get people to think differently. Right, right, absolutely. Um, and a lot of people, when they hear the, the word lean, they think about manufacturing, right? They don't necessarily think about yeah. higher education. Uh, and, and sometimes we hear that lean is only applicable in manufacturing. And I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on that particular topic? Yeah, when I started here over eight years ago, people didn't know what lean was about, especially in higher education. So coming in and beginning to talk about it um, gave us an opportunity to really empower employees. And that was one of the things that people gravitated towards. We're not looking at pushing widgets through a system or how quickly can we create some sort of a product. 
we're working with uh, students, we're working with grants. Uh, how are we, you know, supporting our grant processing? How are we supporting our students? How are we supporting our community when it comes to fundraising and just overall looking at New Hampshire holistically, there's a lot of outreach that, ha that happens within higher education. So we had to view it a little bit differently. It's still the same process. It's still the same methodology. It's just used in a different type of environment. Um, and I think that people have really gravitated to being able to have their voices heard and to also have input into how they do their day-to-day -day work. So it's been very instrumental. And um, we've actually gotten to the point where we started to bring students in to really talk about their experience. So not only are we looking at it from an operational experience of what we do in higher education, we actually flip, flip that around and walk through what we call a student journey where we're like, okay, so we enhance this process, but how does it look on the other end? And mm -hmm. we're really able to look at processes a little bit different from the customer's perspective. So our students are our customers, our community is our customers. We have a wide reach of customers that we deal with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So we wanted to turn that experience around and say, not only are we changing things operationally, we really need to walk in our customer's shoes. And that has been a tremendous help to designing new processes within higher education. So looking at it a little bit differently, um, but still utilizing the same concepts. Um, I, I so much appreciate that you are customer focused and that you know who your customer is. It's such a powerful concept across, not just in manufacturing, but across all industries, right? That we know who our customer is, that we stay customer focused. Uh, and I'm, I'm really interested now, as you're talking through this, I'm really interested to hear about the model that you use for business transformation and how closely related that is to maybe, you know, what I've seen outside of higher education. Yeah, so from a business transformation perspective, a lot of times when, when individuals or departments are evaluating their processes, they're looking at just the process. Mm -hmm. Why take that a step forward? And as we're doing business transformation and making a lot of changes with the way that we deliver um, higher education services, I think we need to take that a step further. So what we've done is we've devised a model where we are looking at people, culture, process, and technology, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this Chevron approach where we talk about, let's look at the people that are doing the work. Let's look at the culture of those departments, those campuses. We have several campuses across the state of New Hampshire. So we're looking at all of our campuses because each campus has their own culture. We are definitely looking at process. And then what is the technology if any, that we're using to execute that today. We then take that and break that down into four phases. We have what's called a discovery phase. And we walk through and we look at the discovery phase and we say for this process or business transformation, who are the people doing the work? What's the culture of the environment in which this work is being um, executed? Mm -hmm. What's the process or what are all the transactions or the processes that are happening? And what's the technology that we're using today? Once we get through the discovery phase, the next phase we go is to standardization. What are we doing the same, similar? What are we doing different? You could have four people doing the same job. They all do it differently. So let's start looking at standardization. Same thing, people, culture, process, technology. Once we identify the standardization piece of it, then we want to optimize. And how do we get everybody doing the same thing? So we go through this optimized stage, looking at all of those four components as well. Then we get to the exciting phase, which is innovate. And so really thinking about how do we want this culture to work? How do we want this team to work together? What are those processes? And then can we either sunset technology, can we bring in new technology? Can we use what we have existing today? Taking that approach has really opened the eyes of a lot of people to really say, we're looking at more than just processes, right? Sure. We, we need to take that approach. And um, it's been pretty successful. So I'm pretty That's amazing. That. Oh, I yeah. love it. Uh, it. It sounds like an amazing uh, program, uh, it, an amazing model. And um, you mentioned technology, and I have heard 
that you guys are using some really, really fun tools uh, as you start, as you adjust to how you deploy your training even. Um, and I'm, I'm interested to hear, you know, as we get into kind of a little bit of this COVID situation discussion, um, you know, obviously many companies, many organizations have had to adjust how they deploy their models or how they uh, are deploying their training specifically. And I'm curious to hear, you know, how this COVID situation has impacted, you know, higher education and maybe your approach to lean training. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great approach. When COVID first hit, we were canceling our training classes. Mm. Um, all of our training classes from our introductory to lean classes to our yellow belt to our green belt classes were all hands-on, face-to-face. And I really had to take a step back and say, you know, I don't think this is going to go away any anytime soon. We're definitely going to be in a situation where many of our employees are remote, but at the same time, a lot of them are going through change. So the need and the passion and the desire for lean training increased twofold. It was incredible. So we took our classes and moved them to virtual classes. The great thing about that is going in this COVID situation for the university itself, they've made a lot of their courses remote. So we had to outfit a lot of our uh, rooms to be Zoom ready. Mm -hmm. And then we also use another technology, uh, it's called the OWL. But what it does is it it's a camera that follows the instructor, right? Okay. So, so you can be in a classroom and, and this technology will follow the instructor. So we can teach in a classroom that has no students in it, but we can re reach a broad range of students. So when I was doing face-to-face -face classes previously, I was restricted to 16 to 18 students per class, staff per class. Now with this going virtual, just held a class with 25 individuals. That's um, amazing. So we can, we can increase our training capacity. We can do it virtually. And then we've also had to bring in some tools to keep people engaged. So we're taking our training and making it virtual. And I believe that we're getting the same feedback from our participants as to their learning ability and what they're taking away from the class. Our yeah. main goal is, I apologize, our main goal is to get students to leave the classroom and be able to apply what they've learned immediately. That's right, exactly. And that, I think that, and that's why I'm interested to hear from you on you know, what, how you've adjusted for the engagement piece, because, you know, this is a time of uncertainty. There's a lot of people that, you know, have fear of losing their jobs and they, they, you know, have distractions at home while they're trying to do schooling and all these different things are happening. How do you keep people engaged during these classes? You know, how do you, how do you try to give them a similar experience as the classroom? Are there specific things that you're doing, specific techniques or tools that you're using in order to make that happen? Absolutely. Um, so our, our classes are very engaging, uh, even virtually. Uh, our mantra, mantra is to have fun. So we, will, we always want to have fun when we do lean, right? Yes. Um, no matter what it is. So what we've done is we've incorporated videos. We've incorporated exercises. Um, we use a couple tools. So one of the things that we do right at the start of class is we have a screen that comes up with all of these emotions happy, sad, excited, nervous, right? We use the Zoom annotate um, feature and we ask the students to tell us how you feel about this training or how do you feel about being engaged in this project? Yes. Um, and they go out and they just start clicking and they can see on the screen, people are nervous, they're excited, they're uncertain. Um, so it really gives us a good gauge as to what we're doing. What a great also, icebreaker. Yes, it is. It is. It's a fantastic one. Um, we also ask if people can be, and I know it's difficult for some, but for people to be on camera when they can. That's um, so important. Yep. It allows us, right? Keep it visual. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's a mantra that you have. Yes. Um, it's good to see the body language, especially if you're working on a lean project, right? You want Absolutely. to see that body language. You want to see what they're doing because that's typically what we do as facilitators in the room. We also um, are using Zoom polls so we can poll people about how they feel. Um, we've, in, we've used a new tool that you introduced us to, um, the menti.com, yes. which actually allows, when we do an activity, it allows people to give us feedback. 
and we can display that feedback real time. That's right. It's a, it's a free, simple tool that we're able to use. All of these tools are part of what we have in our arsenal of tools. Um, and we're able to utilize that. That engagement with people is we know that they're listening, we know that they're paying attention, and we know that we're getting their feedback. One of the things that we've done for our Greenbelt training, which we're going to be doing our first one virtually uh, in the month of December. So here I need to teach facilitators how to be facilitators. And we're going to utilize um, case study tools and breakout rooms within Zoom so that we can give the training and then we're going to have the group break out into these breakout rooms and we're going to give them a problem to solve. Oh, I love that. They're going to come back. Um, so we're trying to be very creative in how we deploy our training. We know that there's distractions at home, dogs barking, kids running through, making yep. sure your kids keeping up with their schoolwork while they're doing it. We take all that into consideration um, as we go through this. And uh, people are very appreciative of that. Yeah. Getting That's done what they need to get done. Exactly. Right. Do you know, it, it, are other universities uh, doing similar things? Do you know, are, are you connected with some of the other universities that have uh, lean training or, or uh, any type of process improvement activities? Do you know, you know, what's happening, I guess, across the U.S. at, at other higher education? Yeah, I mean, we, there's been a lot of communication through LinkedIn. Okay. I've got a lot of connections through LinkedIn and we, we talk about things and, you know, People look at what we're posting. We're, you know, we're looking at what other people are posting. We're doing some research. I've had several institutions that have reached out to me and said, hey, Dagmar, how can we get a lean program up and running? How can we train our staff? Um, how's it working for you? So it's, it's been really great to make those connections with other higher education institutions. Sure. Be able to talk through how we can do things in this this new world that we have, you know, mm -hmm. um, higher education itself was, you know, facing a lot of challenges with competition financially, um, you know, a smaller student demographic. So we've got less students to choose from. So we kind of really had that before COVID started. And then when COVID started, that just, you know, made the problem that much bigger. Mm. So we need to be working together um, as a community to really share our ideas, whether it's our institution or another. I think having that connectivity with other people and learning from other people um, is just going to provide value to those that we serve and the communities that we serve. Absolutely. So. Um, and you mentioned financial. I'm curious to know how uh, COVID has impacted higher education, you know, in, in their current state with everything that's going on. Has, has there been a pretty large impact? It's been a large financial impact on higher education. Think about it. Um, we don't have, you know, we have last spring when COVID hit, we had to send all our students home. Mm. We had to refund all their housing, their dining. They weren't on campus spending money. Um, we had to quickly get our faculty in a position where they can teach remotely 100%. Um, there's a lot of costs are involved around that. Um, we as staff are uh, tested every week for COVID. There's a cost associated with that. Um, so, you know, financially it's, it's, it's been a little tough. Um, we, over the summer, made a goal of trying to get our students to be on campus until November 20th. That was our goal. Um, our community was very strict about all of the COVID uh, restrictions that we had. Students were complying, and I'm happy to say that we met that goal, and our students were able to stay on campus until November 30th. Oh, um, I'm sorry, November 20th. My apologies. Okay. 20th they're now home for break and they'll finish out their semester remotely okay. so that we can keep those numbers down um, but it, it's it's been tremendously financially uh, impacting the university which then causes us to need to refocus and lean has become so much more important now absolutely than ever but you want to know the great thing about it processes that we didn't think we could change when we were all on campus um, are now being changed in that. So here's an example, electronic signatures, right? Um, papers need to be signed. Uh, they got walked around campuses. They needed a wet signature. Now we're not on campus. 
we still need those papers to be authorized. We're now implementing electronic signature. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been pretty fantastic because I think people now look at, a, at their jobs through a lens in a different kind of way. That's right. And so it allows for that creativity. And I'm really excited about that because yeah. people are like, oh, we were doing lean and we didn't even know we were doing lean. <laughs> That's right. That's Nothing right. Nothing more exciting than, than for that to happen. That's right. Um, so, so, you know, although COVID has had some um, difficult financial times, not only in higher education, I know across all industries, I think that we've been able to take it in a way that we've been able to get some successes out of it as well um, and really come together as a community. I really, I really look at higher education as a very tight community um, between everyone involved. That's awesome. I'm so, so happy yeah. to hear that. I'm happy to hear that, you know, amidst all of the, the challenges that COVID is bringing, that there are definitely some positives that are coming out of it for the university and in and, and higher education. So, and I, I want to thank you for the amazing work that you and your team are doing, um, not only for the University of New Hampshire, but, you know, just in higher education in general. So thank you for the work that you guys are putting in. Patrick, thank you so much. It was very exciting to be here today. Um, and I want to wish you the best of luck on your new book. So I have, I to, plug, that. I, I have to plug your book for you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm excited to be on the launch team. I'm excited to pre-order my book um, and, and really anxious to get it in hand. So best of luck to you and all the work that you're doing. Thank you so much, Dagmar. I appreciate your time as well. And I appreciate the plug. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to getting back out there for uh, when we get back in person for your next uh, Lean Summit. So love, yeah. love your Lean Summit that you guys put on out there at the university. So great. Thanks, Patrick. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.